So before going to the main part of my speech, that'll be about trying to give you some re real experience to support what Truman just showed, I would like to give you a, a short introduction about our company. H2I was founded in 2008 by the merging of two old public companies. And as of today, H2I is one of Italy's largest utilities. At a high level, some four years ago, the company designed and announced a long-term business strategy having sustainability at the center with our target to become net zero by 2040. More specifically, this business strategy has two main pillars. The first one is called energy transition, and the second one is circular economy. So we do business and provide services in several areas. The business unit I'm in, um, the Hammond D Center I'm in is, is the power generation section in our company. We have several combined cycle units, one of Italy's largest hydro fleet, and we have also been growing very fast in solar and wind lately. Then the environment, and by that we mean waste collection, waste management, owning and managing material recovery or waste to energy facilities. We manage large distribution networks for both gas and electricity, which we also sell. We have district heating and then water cycle, public lighting and smart infrastructure. As I said, I joined the company five years ago and I've been part of a monitoring a diagnostic center that is in charge for monitoring and supporting our combined cycle sites. And we'll leverage cloud-based APM reliability to pursue this goal. The locations of such sites are shown here in this map of Italy. As you can see, there are, they are most in the north of the country, but we also have a site in central Italy. Although we have 100% cloud-based APM reliability users now, our journey with predictive analytics starts a long time ago, started a long time ago, even before A2A was actually founded. And it started at a power company that was at that time named Eddie Power, and which was later acquired by A2A. In 2007, first as a POC and down with a full fleet rollout, Eddie Power decided to head up on-prem smart signal models to start monitoring and to start gathering predictive insights, predictive warnings for their power plants. So when this company was acquired by A2A a few years later, A2A started their journey with smart signal analytics as well. Cloud-based reliability, APM reliability was then adopted in 2017 for a couple of sites, namely Casano and Kivasso, with a much larger revamping package that was aiming at increasing reliability and flexibility for those power stations to better meet market demands, change, always change in market demands. Started in 2018 till 2020, we carried out a full migration of existing on-prem smart signal analytics to the cloud. And generally speaking, we completed a fleet rollout of our APM reliability analytics. Halfway in this journey in 2019, that is when the monitoring center was established. And up to that point, it was the Paris-based GIMS service that was in charge for our APM models and alerts. 
after the announced monitoring center was established, we gradually took over from IMS. We started with processing our own alerts. We then moved to model maintenance all the way up to a full rework of our blueprints when needed until developing Hadoc analytics for very specific use cases when we need them. So this is in general our journey with this solution, with this technical solution that has been here to support us with gathering insights into our data and get early warning of potential failure for our power plants. So in general, we've been using both cloud-based APM reliability, but as I said, we started with on-prem smart signal. I also personally started with smart signal for one or two years, then we moved to the cloud. What I would like to do here is to provide a sort of comparison and tell you something more about the difference, the main differences we found when migrating to the cloud. The first advantage we saw is what we call information management. It's easier for us to manage our alerts in the cloud, to browse them, filter, sorting them, and so forth. And then there's a very useful case management tool that serves as a sort of repository to keep track of all relevant information and past issues you share with production sites. In the cloud, you have access to a very, as German said earlier, to a very comprehensive digital twin blueprints and predictive diagnostics library you can take to develop your own models and you can also rework them if you need to before deploying them for your models. Then there are some new nice features that make your analysis easier. And there's one that I will show you in details later on that is called event frame analysis. And there will be a real use case where we took a huge advantage of this visualization to, to understand what was going on. But probably the main difference and the main advantage we experience is what our IT infrastructure. I've been an APM user for over five years and honestly, I know little or nothing, and I care nothing about our IT backbone. And that's because you do not need, if you work in the cloud, you will not need any physical machines to run your analytics on. So you will not need to maintain any machine. You will not need to worry about product up upgrades. Sometimes you don't even notice them as they happen seamlessly. Ham, also, in case you have an issue from minor glitches to a major interruption, it's easier and quicker to get support by the GE service team. Let me go a bit deeper into a couple of real use cases. The first one is about gas turbine. So in other words, as a real application of the blueprint Truman showed earlier today. It's not the very same blueprint, rather it is a sort of an adaptation of that blueprint that was originally designed for steady state monitoring, but in this specific use case, that blueprint was readapted to monitor a transient state of this machine that is a machine startup, and that readaptation gives us a solution that uh, allows us to monitor such startups. And this specific issue was caught in a, during a couple of startups. So it's basically about a failure with a GT inlet bleed valve. And what we found was that such a valve at a power station of ours was taken much longer than usual to respond to opening requests by the control system. I'll show you the evidence, the supporting evidence in a while. We raised this evidence on this notification almost immediately to our colleagues at site, and they inspected the valve and found unusual friction in some internal moving parts. 
which was fixed by replacing some items some with better lubrication as well. Thus, early warning this prompt action helped us prevent more serious issues with such a valve, which would probably have led to a startup trip and maybe also to unstable combustion and steady state operation, potentially leading to higher emissions. So let me switch to the next one, which gives us an insight into the evidence behind this use case. This is what I, as I said earlier, this is the event frame visualization tool. Basically, what I'm doing here as showing some relevant signals in a side-by-side -side visualization for eight different startups so that it's easy for a user, for an analyst or an SME to understand how such relevant signals were behaving in each, each single startup compared to the other ones. And if you look at the bottom of the screen, you'll see uh, the signal for this valve position. Actually, you'll get two lines. The blue line is the actual value for, from your DCF, from your control system, while the green line is the estimate, the expected value that, has, that was calculated by our model. And it's easy to understand at first sight that in three different circumstances, this valve was taken much longer than expected to react to a control system request. Another visualization is what G calls the analysis view, the analysis tab, the analysis visualization, and so whatsoever. What I'm doing here is something different. So I picked a specific event out of the three I highlighted in my previous image, um, in particular the one that occurred on January 9th, 2023. And I'm displaying a couple of signals and an overlay, and I overlaid them. And specifically, we have the blue line that shows us the control system request and the orange line that gives us the actual valve position. And it's very easy to understand that it was taking some 10 minutes for this valve to adapt to a control system opening request, which is very unusual and was an indication of a, was a very much an early warning of a valve failure that was caught on time uh, that gave our people the opportunity to fix that before more serious, possible, possible more serious consequences. Well, the second use case is probably a more traditional one. As we're going to speak, a rise in vibrations for a condensate pump motor. I said more traditional because, at least with our experience, but I think Trevor will be able to confirm that. Smart signal analytics were first designed to catch small deviations propagating over time in steady state operation, and that is a steady state use case compared to the previous one that was a transient use case, which is, as I said, a readaptation of original blueprints to monitor machine transient situations. Back to this number two use case, we're speaking a condensate pump motor. And as you'll see in my next trend, we did detected a rise in vibrations in August 2023. We again notified this major deviation to our colleagues at site, and site investigation revealed a significant motor failure, but though significant, that failure was caught on time. Um, by acting promptly, we were able to prevent much larger damages to the equipment as the mother was taken out of service on time, replaced with a spare one, and sent out to be repaired. So by heck, for sure, we reduced maintenance costs to restore such a mother. 
and there's a small chance still small but still we had the chance of causing a full unit trip because of this failing margin and that was again prevented by this early warning and prompt action by our colleagues again the supporting evidence which will give us again a better understanding of how smart signal actually works you'll see basically three boxes in this image the first one is a light green box and again you got two lines the blue one actual value and the green one the expected values calculated by our models the difference between such values is called residual and is shown at the bottom of the screen in the green in the light green box will see normal operation at the, with very very small residual that means that this piece of a camera was working properly but also that our model was a real digital twin of our actual piece of equipment. Then, fast forward to the red box, you'll notice a sharp change in the actual value and residual, where residuals ranging from two millimeters per second up to three millimeters per second. A big change if you look at that in such a way, but still below DCS alarms. So nobody was going to notice that otherwise. We were able to catch this deviation thanks to this more signal elaboration of our data. Um, we raised a notification, as I said earlier, and the matter was replaced with a spare one. And we go to the dark green box where we see there's a still a minor but persistent deviation between actual and estimate values. That means that that's something that you can expect because you're using your original digital twin to monitor, to replicate as a replicant of a slightly different piece of equipment because you replace the matter with a different one. So that deviation in the dark box shall not be interpreted as a something that is not working properly rather that means that you need to perform a mode of retrain to regain your full monitoring capabilities in your digital twin and to restart a situation that is closer to the light grade box that's all for my part thanks again for joining and if you have questions, I'll be glad to help.